Lord, may your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Teach us your word. Let the word enter inside of us and change us and turn us into the kind of men and women, boys and girls that you want us to be. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This you may be seated. Praise the Lord. We are taking our series on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. And we are looking at the Comforter has come. Praise God. I do not want you to be in this study as a religious person I want by the grace of God the practicality of our faith and our work with God to be clear uh, to every one of us uh, last week we were here and I know that uh, there are people here who got into experiences with God we will be looking uh, into that you know, in, in the course of this meeting. Praise God. But one of the things I, I want you to understand is that you must, be, you must be expectant. You must be, you must be open-hearted and open-minded. And you must completely, you know, yield yourself to Him. Uh, that is important. Uh, I pray that our talk today, our study today, will be very practical. And uh, if you have any question uh, of something you do not understand, please feel free to raise your hand and ask your question so that we can clarify areas that are not clear to you. Is that clear, please? Ask chapter 2. I, I read again from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was what? Was fully come. They were all, they were all with one accord in one place. I ju just stop there for a moment. Last week I told you what the Bible means when the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. And I said two major feasts in the faith and the religion of the Jews in those days. One is the feast of what? Passover. And then the other one is the feast of what? Pentecost. Okay, then. So, you know, you have the feast of uh, Passover. And you know what Passover is all about. And then that Passover culminated in Jesus Christ being our what? Our what? Our Passover. That means he was our sacrificial lamb that was slain for our sins. Now, from the day of Passover... You know, from the day of Passover to the day of Pentecost is how many days? Come on, talk to me if you, because you study and you learn and you know. From the day, from, past, from Passover to Pentecost, how many days? 50 days. So Pentecost actually means 50 in Greek. Pentecost means what? 50. So the feast of Pentecost comes 50 days after the feast of what? Passover. So, the feast of Passover, and in that Passover, Christ was, our Passover was crucified for us. Is that right? So now, if the feast of Passover is, uh, is uh, from that day is 50 days, and Christ was, you know, died on the day of Passover, and was, and was buried, and he rose the third day. Is that right? He rose, rose what? The third day. And when he rose the third day, he now stayed here on earth and moving around, you understand? And moving around with the, with the apostles. How many days? 40 days. Thank you. You are now a, a strong Bible stu uh, student, a scholar. Now, 40 days he, st he stayed around and we saw it in after the Apostles chapter 1. Is that right? Okay, so we now say from Pentecost to from Passover... Uh, uh, three days when Jesus Christ was in the grave, you know, and dead rose the third day. Now for 40 days when he was here on earth, how many days is that? 
43 days. 3 days and then 40 days. How many days? 43 days. From the time Jesus Christ went to heaven and the day when Pentecost, the day of Pentecost was fully come was how many days? 7. Clap for yourselves. You are wonderful students. Thank you. 7 days. So, you know, those 7 days, the Bible tells us that's those seven days when the disciples came down from Mount Olives. Eh? They now went into the upper room and stayed there for how many days? For seven solid days. And what were they waiting for? For the promise of the Holy Ghost. Am I talking to somebody? So for seven days, they were there. And I want you to pay attention. For seven days, they were there. And I said it last week. I said part of the problem that believers have today is that they do not give God time. Part of the problems of this generation is that they don't give God time. Brothers and sisters, a God, God requires time to do something deep in our lives. And if you do not give him that time, he will not be able to do the things he wants to do. Why does he require time? The reason is because that is God. He is a spirit. Here you are. You are also a spirit. But you live in the flesh. Am I talking to somebody? There are a lot of things that block you from the realm of the spirit. That block the channels of God in your life. When you give God time and you stay in his presence it, it helps God to remove all the impediments and all the blockages am I talking that are in our hearts that are in our lives so that he will be able to carry out his operations in our lives these people stayed with the Lord for seven solid days they were waiting they were praying they were looking up to him. They were crying out to him. They were there. Seven days. Seven days. And that is a challenge to all of us. That the time has come when we should go back to the closet. We should go back to the secret place. The poverty of Christian life today is the shallowness of the secret place. That's the poverty. The reason is God, the things that God will do in your life, He will do them in secret. Is that right? When you stay with Him and you seek His face and you pray to Him. So, all this jumping in, jumping out, five minutes you are in, five minutes. Who, who do you think God is? And you are asking God for something big. Lord, change my life. Lord, transform my life. Lord, do something huge in my life. He cannot do it in five minutes. Don't let anybody deceive you. He cannot do it in the 10 minutes. You rush into his presence and you rush out. Maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon. Some of us don't even have such times at all with God. And if you don't have time for God, God will not have time for you. Praise God. Do you understand this? Brothers, sisters, please hear me. A man's destiny is polished in the secret place. It is when you stay with him. That is why the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So it didn't say, He that visits the secret place. It is he that dwelleth. What does that mean? He lives there. You are resident there. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now you see somebody that does not dwell, but he rushes in and rushes out. Shall he abide under the shadow of the Almighty? No, because he only visited. He only rushed in there. And brothers and sisters, please, this is very important. The reason is because all the things that are happening around us, they are aimed to bring us out of the secret place so that we do not dwell there, so that we do not reside there. The cares of this life, everything, the pursuits of life, and so on and so forth, is making sure that we do not have time for God. We do not have time to seek God. And because of that, we are poor for it. We are poor in spiritual things. We are poor in spiritual gifts. We are poor in the power of God. We are poor in everything. They stayed one full week. Praise God. Stayed one full week. 
you are you desiring more of god do you want god to visit you in a dimension that will shock your generation it is you to stay with him if you don't if you don't and it is something you decide in your heart nobody can decide it for you nobody can even force you into it it is something you will make up your mind and say this is what i have decided to do praise god T.L. Osborne, that great American evangelist, one of the fathers of, the modern, of modern Christian faith, went to India. And when he went to India, he, he went and preached to them and said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Then they looked at him and said, which God? He said, the God of the Bible. He said, which Bible? He said, that Bible is you people's Bible. We have our own Bible. We have our own scriptures. So if you say, for God so loved the world, which God are you talking about? And for many years, he was preaching in India. He did not win one single soul. And out of frustration, he now came back to America on what they used to call for log. And when he came, one of the nights, it was a great man of God that was holding a, a crusade. And T.L. Osborne now went. And when T.L. Osborne went there, he saw power. He saw how miracles were happening. Blind eyes were opening. Lame legs were walking and so on. T.L. Osborne said, this is what I need in India. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because the kingdom of God is not in... It is in what? In power. This is what I need. So T.L. Osborne came home. When he came home, and then he called his wife. He said, my wife, uh, this is the key. I'm entering the, my room here. Lock this door. And don't open it until I tell you I must meet with God. I cannot go back to India and be disgraced the way I have been disgraced. If I don't tell you to open this door, don't open it. No food, no water. He locked himself in. In fact, it was not him that locked it. He gave his wife. He said the wife should lock the door. And the wife looked at him and locked the door because she knew her husband. And her husband now fell on his face and said, Father, she has carried the key. If you do not visit me, then kill me. But I am not leaving this place until your power comes upon my life. That's how to seek God. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not uh, by the grace of God. Uh, if it happens, happen. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. No, you must come to a point where you are desperate. Dear husband went inside there and was seeking the face of God. One day passed, two days passed, three days passed, four days passed. And because God saw that he was determined. Because God looks at the heart. Am I talking? God looks at your heart. He looks and checks whether you really desire him or not. Whether you really want him or not. God knows whether you are trying to patronize him. God knows whether you are trying to bamboozle him or deceive him. That is why a lot of people, you know, and churches, there are no power, no testimonies. Because God knows the person who is only using his mouth to come close to him. God knows the heart that searches for him with everything they've got. And because God saw that T.L. Osborne was determined to see his face, the power of God fell upon T.L. Osborne. He started speaking in tongues and the power of God mightily came on him. And after the power of God had come on him, he was sure that God had visited him. He went and it was him that knocked on the door. Boom, boom, boom. He told, told his wife, told his wife, Daisy, please open the door. I have found God. Praise the Lord. What happened? He made up his mind that he was going to seek God. How many people will make up his mind, their minds today? Like it used to be in the days of old. Brothers and sisters, Christianity is not jumping up and down, jumping into the presence of God, jumping out of it. No. Christianity is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. 
lock the door and let it be with you between you and god alone every problem you have in your life the answer is in the hands of god if you seek him you will find him when you seek him with all of your heart is that in your bible that's the way it is that's the way it is you can decide and say i want to i want i want god or you want to deceive yourself and pretend you want him and god knows that you, you don't want him god knows that you are not ready to invest any time for him god knows that you are not ready to seek him well god is not the one to lose it is you and i that will lose if we do not spend time with him how much time are you giving to god to see the power of god how many praise the name of the lord Praise the name. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 63. Please, please, please put your hand here because we are doing a study of this chapter. You know, and put in Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Look at what the Bible says. From verse 1, it says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I do what? Will I seek thee? My soul thirsted for thee. Brothers, this is the key. Oh. My soul does what? Thirsted. I want to ask you a question. Do you have a thirst for God? Is there a thirst for God in your heart? My soul thirsted like, 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 like you would thirst for water. You would thirst for water. That is why the Bible says in Psalm 40, uh, 42, it says, as the, as the deer panted after what? The water brews. So panted my heart after thee, O oh God. There must be a desire. There must be a desire. In, and if there is no desire, something is wrong with our Christian experience. As the, as the heart, the dear, panted after the water bruise, so panted my soul after thee, O oh God. Look at the next verse. The next verse. The next verse. He says, My soul thirsted for God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can God make it our statement, our experience? My soul does what? Tested for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My soul tested after God. Not this carnal thing. Not this fleshly thing of just going up and down. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Brothers, a Christian is not a label. A Christian is a life. A Christian, I'm a Christian. It's not because I'm carrying the Bible. It is my experience with the divine. My experience with God. That is what makes me a Christian. And because I am a Christian, I interact with God, with the divine. His desire is in my heart. His thirst is in me. As the deer panted after, eh, as the heart panted after, after, what the water proves that's not big english for those of us who grew up in the village we understand what it means what is called the heart is the deer is called the deer and you know the deer the deer when it is thirsty the deer can 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 hear the sound of waterfall you know streams uh, streams flowing from afar and then the deer when it is a Open his mouth, ha, the tongue is out. Ha, ha, ha. It, the thirst will be so much that sometimes you will see some spit will be coming out of his mouth. It is, and then it is running to the water brooks to go and 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 drink from the water brooks. The psalmist said, in the same way as the deer panted after the water brooks, so so is it so is it so this superficial christianity and kind of christianity is stinking in the nose of god young people now give their life to christ and all they are interested in is entertainment young people give their lives to christ 
They don't want to have time to stay with God. They would rather go for music concerts. And they think that it is music concert that will carry the day or bring the revival. No! Revival is brought down on the tables of men's hearts. That's where revival comes. Revival doesn't come because you go to concert. Concert where they are going to give you entertainment. That does not bring God down, brother. That doesn't bring God down. And brothers and sisters, all you will see is religion. You won't see God. As they had the dear pants after the water brooks, so pants my soul. Oh God, give us back our experience with you. Oh God, visit us again so that our panting after you will be like the panting of the tear after the water brooks. That's what we want. That's what we want. We are not what what, what we want is not Suya nights. What we want is not jeans weekend. That's not what we want. We want our hearts to be set on fire. For the water, for the for the test of God, as the tear pants after the water brooks. I want to tell, talk, talk to you, young people. Heaven is relying on you. Unfortunately, the way I see a lot of young people, and the way they seek for God, and the way they walk with God, unfortunately. It's like this generation will disappoint God. What God is looking for in his church is not comedians. Oh God, and bring the ways of the world to come and advance the cause of, of God. God is his spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As the deer pants after the water brooks, so panteth my soul for you oh god my soul thirsted for you my soul thirsted thirsts for god who can say this who can make this statement and god will bear him witness my soul thirsts for god for the living God when shall I come and appear before God when shall I come when shall I come and appear before God when shall I come and appear before God which means God is waiting for me to appear for the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God Psalm 63 Psalm 63 put it there for me it says oh God thou art my God early will I seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh even my flesh even my flesh that we say that this our flesh is an enemy to, to God but this my flesh because when my soul tested for him to a point my flesh will agree my flesh will agree my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is Look at the next verse. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. I pray that we will not fail God. I pray that we will not fail our generation. I pray that we will not fail redemption. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is what those apostles, those disciples, 100, about 120 of them, they were there. That's what they were crying for. That's what they were crying for. 
and they were crying unto God. We want, oh, because they know here Jesus has, has gone, and the Jews are already raging and, and, and raking. The only answer, the only answer is what heaven can deliver. Look at Christianity. Look at it. There is no power. There is no. Look at it. I heard a man of God say the other day. He said that some young people have gathered themselves in a particular state and they have decided that they are going back to to the traditional to the religion of their of their forefathers. That is the traditional African religion. That is idol worshipping. Eh? That uh, 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 Amadioha and Songo and all that. that. That's what that they want to reject Christianity. Why? Because they don't see power. Hello? They don't because doing church without the Holy Ghost does not produce power. Am I talking to somebody? Doing church without the Holy Ghost cannot produce power. You can only come to church and hear, uh, 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 hear lectures, hear preachings, preachings that are moral instructions but does not set fire in your spirit. Because they don't see power. So Christianity has no power. They have not, they can be talking about church not having power. But the kingdom of God has power. Praise the name of the Lord. Christian believers, young people, the challenge is to us to make sure that the faith of our fathers is established in our land. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Look at verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. He says, because thy loving kindness <laughs> is better than life. Clap for Jesus. My lips shall praise thee. Hallelujah. That's what they were looking for. That's what they were seeking. That's why they stayed there one week. When last did you wait upon the Lord a whole day? When last did you say, three days I am seeking the face of God? I'm seeking the face of God. And let me say this. You know, the reason why sometimes there are some people who even spend three days eh, and they don't see power is because they seek God for selfish reasons. They seek God for selfish reasons. No, we are talking of my thirst, my soul thirsting for God. So that as I stay with Him, I am not concerned about my own needs. I am concerned about his glory and his power. And I'm not concerned about his power so that I can come and manifest power. No, I am concerned about his power upon the earth. I am, I am, I am on God and telling him, God, can't you see your world the way it is? Do something in your world. Raise men. I am not saying raise me. Am I talking? I am not praying, Father, raise me. I am saying raise men. Hello, is someone hearing me? All these selfish prayers. Father, make me a great man of God. God does not answer those prayers. God wants you to be concerned about him, not you. Raise men, Father, who will come and put the devil to shame. Raise men, oh God, that will come and bring your power down. Raise men. If God choose now chooses that you are one of the men, it is his choice. But it is not because you pray for it. This selfish Christianity must die. Because it is robbing us of the power of God. Those people stayed one week, seven days. Praying. They didn't know how long it would be. Because Jesus Christ told them, Carry until eh, until what the promise of my father comes upon you they didn't even know that it was going to be 
on the day of Pentecost. They didn't know. Jesus didn't tell them that. Praise God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one what? Accord in one place. Let me say something about that. They were all in one what? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. And, and I'm praying to God that, that God will begin to do something deep in our hearts. Do something deep in our lives. The precondition for the baptism in the Holy Spirit is purity of heart. Am I talking? <laughs> it's what? Purity of heart. Our hearts must be pure. Now, that purity of heart will now be evident in the unity of spirit. That purity of heart will now be what? Evident in what? In the unity of spirit. They were with one what? Accord. In that is with one heart, with one mind they minded the same thing all they were looking for is the glory of God not their own glory not their own ministry not their own empire they were interested only in the glory of God they were with one accord they were all minding the same thing there was no schism among them. There was no, no, no jealousy or envy. There was no bad heart towards themselves. Am I talking? They were all in one accord. They had the same care for one another they minded the things of the other more than the thing of themselves one accord unity of spirit unity of purpose in one place does this make sense to you Bre brothers and sisters does it make sense to you our heart must be brought into that state in which God looks at our heart and is satisfied. One, this person was not suspecting the other person. This person was not trying to outdo the other person. This person was not trying to sing more than the other person. If a brother brought a song, those seven days, if a brother brought a song, everybody sang it with all their hearts. If a sister brought a song, everybody did what? Sang it. And all of them were blessed by whoever brings the song. Whoever. One person is not trying to bring a song and bring another one. No. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was, was in control of everything. This brother, sister will bring the song. And then the other one will bring. And as they bring, the spirit was one. Because everything was linked up in the realm of the spirit. This brother will bring his own song. And sing and they sing and they sing and they sing. And another sister will not be in a hurry to stop the singing of the other brother's song. So that her own song can be. No! Nothing was their own. Not song. Not prophecy. Not prayer. Everything belonged to God. And everything was flowing like that. They were all with one accord, with one mind, with one spirit. Their spirits were joined together as one. one more than 120 brethren, their spirits were all joined. And the spirit was one. Praise the Lord. Spirit was one. And when that magical, amazing, supernatural moment 
was achieved in the realm of the spirit oh, praise the Lord it's, the Bible says and suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting praise God it was like a rushing mighty wind praise God the Indonesian revival was titled like a rushing mighty wind brothers eyes have not seen neither have ears heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him what listen there, see, there is there is nothing this God cannot do am I talking the miracles that took place during the Indonesian revival was so supernatural because the people with one mind with one heart has sought the Lord and God visited them like a rushing mighty wind we can be in this hall when our spirits are joined together and our hearts are joined together and all we seek for is him alone we are not looking for things God is our thing God is everything that we are looking for God said to uh, uh, Moses uh, uh, said to Joshua you will give inheritance uh, unto all the tribes of Israel give them lands uh, give them uh, portions and give them territories uh. he said but for the Levites uh, you will not give them any land any territory or any portion because I am their portion hi the person that has God has it all. Let me hear amen. That is all that God is looking for. When we seek for him with all our hearts and we say it is all God I'm seeking. Brother, forget about those who are dancing around and looking for things. You will out own them. Like rushing mighty wind and fill the house where they all were. Praise the Lord. And you know, when, when the Spirit has done his job, and all of us are in the right place with him, in the right place, praise God, in the right what? Place. In the right place. In the right place. In the right place. In the right place. I pray that you will not receive the grace of God in vain. That this grace will have his perfect work in our hearts. Where our hearts are clean. Purified. 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 I have nothing against your brother. Nothing against your sister. You get to know that all of us are human. Is that right? Offenses must come. Is that right? Because we are human. We are not perfect. We are not angels. Now I'm relating with my brother. He is relating with me. In the midst of relating, there can be misunderstanding. Is that right? I misunderstand him. He misunderstands me. I misunderstand her. She misunderstands me. I won't hold it against my brother. Because even me, I also misunderstood her. Am I talking? What do I do? I let it go. Because, because the very best among men is surrounded with weaknesses. Am I talking? The very best. So why do you judge your brother, judge your sister? Hey, hey, this, hey. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't. You can't be judging your brother, judging your sister. He didn't do this. He didn't greet me. He didn't visit me. He didn't wish me happy birthday and so on and so forth. No! Those things are mundane things. They, they are higher things. Am I talking to somebody? Simply because I call my brother and I, I, uh, he, didn't, uh, uh, he didn't reply, it becomes a problem to me. No! Do I know where he was? Do I know the condition in which he was? Do I know who he was with? Do I know whether at that time he was struggling for his breath? I mean, why? I hold a lot of things against him. No, 
when the Holy Spirit comes, praise the Lord, before the Holy Spirit comes, all those things will be what? Set aside. We throw it away. You are my brother. You are my sister. So hold me by your hand. Together we will walk till he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us as we walk in side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. It is not only the song, it is the experience. It's the experience. Genuine love in our hearts for our brethren. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, I pray that the God of suddenly will visit us. This church, this church, this church, this church, I pray that the God of suddenly will visit us with the Holy Spirit like a rushing mighty wind, like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus. That's what we need. That's all we need. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Remove your religious thinking cap. And look at these people as practical people sitting in a room. Waiting. Because they believe what their master said. And all they were doing is they were praying. And as they were praying, they were recounting the experiences they had with Jesus while he was with them. They were just talking. And then they were singing. There was no preaching. Hello? There was no what? No, 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 no. Everybody was sharing their words, their testimonies their experiences. This is how, you know, he related with me. I remember the other day, and so on, they were just sharing and sharing. As they shared, somebody will raise a song, and they will sing it. And they sing, 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 sing. Somebody will raise a prayer, and they will pray. They were not pray. They were not raising the prayer by prayer topic. They were not saying, let us, let us pray uh, for, for, no. That is the Holy Spirit was raising the prayer for them. Am I talking? And all the prayers they were raising were the prayers not of their need. Am I talking? They were raising the prayer of the glory and the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And say, Father, it is only you that know the times and the seasons which you have put in your power. And you say, but we shall receive power. Praise God. There was no pride. There was no self. There was no, I am the greatest apostle. I am bigger than everybody. I know, there was nothing like that. Their hearts were pure. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven like of a like uh, of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting verse 3 and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of what as of fire and he sat upon each of them cloven tongues praise God cloven tongues Cloven tongues. You know what cloven tongues of fire is? You know how it is. And uh, when they discovered it, it just came. And none of them were seeing it. It rested upon, upon each of them. And none of them were seeing it. And they were seeing it. 
They've never seen anything like that before. Nobody has ever told him of anything like that before because it has never happened before. Suddenly they saw that upon each and every one of them, just like we are all gathered here now, you know, and then the cloven tongues just came and then boom, 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 boom on each of them. And before they could ask what is going on, verse 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with what? Other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Before they could ask, what's going on? In fact, as, 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 as they wanted to ask, somebody opened his mouth and said, what's going on? Suddenly, it's another tongue he's speaking. And another person, whoa, 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 started speaking in another tongue. Another person, the whole place, they, they were just speaking in tongues. This one was speaking in tongues. This one, everywhere, it was artists. The commotion was too much. They were speaking in tongues. This one, this speaking, speaking. Everybody was speaking because it is, it is not that everybody was rolling on the floor. The Bible didn't say they were rolling on the floor. The reason is because many times now, we think that the operation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is when somebody is rolling on the floor. They were not, does the Bible say they were rolling on the floor? They were not rolling on the floor. So don't let anybody tell you that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you must roll on the floor. No, it is not a must. If you, if you decide to, uh, uh, for you to fall under the anointing, that is okay. But it doesn't mean that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will roll on the floor. That is not what it says. Praise God. Every one of them started speaking with, with, with in tongues. They started speaking in tongues. They started speaking in tongues. What, what does it mean they started speaking in tongues? They started speaking in languages that was not their own. That is what tongues is. Hello? They started speaking in languages that was not their and languages they had not learned. So they just started speaking. This was going to speak. This was going to speak. This was, they were all speaking. Can you imagine more than 120 people? They just speak in different languages like that. And they never learned it from anywhere. Kai! That is the Holy Spirit. Clap for Jesus. That is the initial evidence of Holy Ghost baptism. I'm going to stop here because there are many things. Speaking in an unknown language, in an unknown tongue, is the initial evidence of what? Of Holy Ghost baptism. Do you understand? Please pay attention. The reason is because the things I am teaching you, I want to correct all the errors and all the nonsense that are flying around. And a lot of things, a lot of people are bringing into, into the body of Christ. When someone receives the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence is that he will speak in a language he never learned. A language he did not know before. Praise God. How? Even he himself cannot explain. But the Bible said it is as the Spirit gives what? Utterance. You will not be taught that language. You will not. I remember when we were growing up as Christians, you know, they used to teach. You go to some churches and they will be teaching people how to speak in tongues. You don't teach people how to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You don't teach people. You say, okay, uh, now let me teach you. Just open your mouth. And I just say la, you say la. Just say la la, you say la la. You say la la la. You say, say la 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 la. You say hey, speaking, speaking. That is not Holy Ghost. That is not speaking in tongues. You don't teach it. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, without even you knowing, you will just.
Praise the name of the Lord. It is when they started teaching people how to speak in tongues that you see people who get baptized, who say they are baptized in the Holy Ghost and there is no power. I am going to, I will show you when the Holy Ghost is on you, what you will experience. I will show you in subsequent studies. Because we are going to study this thing until the Holy Ghost becomes your partner, your friend. Until you are conscious of the Holy Spirit in your daily life. Am I talking? You are conscious of that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is your closest friend. The Holy Spirit is closer to you than Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that makes Jesus manifest in your life. Am I talking? Speaking in other tongues is the initial evidence that someone is baptized in the Holy Ghost. So you cannot say, I am baptized in the Holy Ghost and you didn't speak in tongues. Some people say that. Eh? I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. He said, how do you know? Because I felt warm. It's not by feeling warm. It's not by feeling warm. If you get close to fire, won't you feel warm? Hello? When you step into the sun, won't you feel warm? You will feel warm. But feeling warm does not mean that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. How do you know you're about to go? You know, it's because when the pastor preached, I just fell down and started rolling. Did you speak in tongues? No, sir. I only rolled. Rolling is not the evidence that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. When the pastor was praying, ah, I know I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. When the pastor was praying and I was praying, I just felt something drop on my head. Did you speak in tongues? No, I only feel bomb. Goose pimple fool my body. Goose pimple is not the evidence that the Holy Ghost, you have received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Do you understand that? When the Holy Ghost comes and you receive Him in baptismal measure, the initial evidence is simple. What is it? What is it? That is what the Bible says here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it is as the Spirit of God gives you what? What rest. Stand to your feet. We'll continue this week. In John chapter seven, John chapter seven. Verse 37. Please put it on the screen for me. John chapter 7. He says, He says, In the last day, that great day of what? Of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man does what? Let him come unto me and do what? Verse, the next verse, verse 38. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his what? Shall do what? Flow rivers of living water. Look at the next verse. The next verse. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that do what? Believe. Who believes here? Come on, talk to me. Who believes here? He said, but this spake he of the Spirit. Which day that do what? How many people that believe us here? He said, they that believe on him should do what? Should receive. Which means, everyone that believes on him should receive. Amen. Everyone that believes on him should do what? 
So listen. For the Holy Ghost was not yet what? Given. Because that Jesus was not yet what? Glorified. That was then. But is Jesus glorified now? Is the Holy Ghost given now? Has the Comforter has come now? Who are believers here? You should receive him. Lift up your voice and say, Father, I receive the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and talk to God. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. received him. There are some that have already received the Holy Spirit. I am not saying that you should pray to receive him again. Because you have already received him. David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uphold me with thy free spirit. <laughs> take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uphold me with that first one. So what you will be asking for is refilling. Refill me. Refill me. Sometimes you have the Holy Spirit baptism, but somehow it is going down because of a lot of things. Tell him, Lord, I need a refilling of the Holy Spirit. That's for those who have him already. For those who have not yet received him, if you are not a believer, don't pray for the Holy Spirit. If you are not yet born again, don't pray for the Holy Spirit. Ask God, ask the Lord to save your soul. And He can save your soul today and fill you with the Holy Spirit today. But if you know you are born again, if you know you are a child of God, His Bible says that them that believe on Him should receive. That means you should. Nothing can stop you. Nothing should stop you from receiving. Except yourself. He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So as with your hands on your head, let the Holy Spirit of the living God baptize you now. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you now. Let the Holy Spirit of God come upon you now. Receive the Holy Spirit. I'm not hearing your amen. If I were you, I would shout that amen like that. Receive the Holy Spirit. 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 Receive, receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. 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 Receive 
the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Every blockage in your heart, every blockage in your life, let the blood of Jesus wash them out of your life. Wash them out of your heart. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Your amen should be according to your level of thirst. My soul thirsted after God. My soul thirsted. I am thirsty after God. I am thirsty for Him. I am thirsty. I am thirsty. Your amen should be according to the level of your thirst for God. Receive the Holy Ghost. 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 Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. I break every barrier. I destroy every chain. I destroy every hindrance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. 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 Receive.
Fall afresh. Fall afresh. Fall afresh. Fall afresh. Fall afresh. Receive the Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. Receive him. The Comforter has come. Receive him. The Comforter has come. Thank you. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you.
you continue this prayer even as you go home on the road in your house as you lie down continue with these prayers Thank you. 